this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a multiple dimension waterfall chart and have filters that work. Uh, this is the only way that I know how to do it in Tableau. Other ways, you just can't apply filters or multiple filters or multiple select. Um, so let's just dive in. We're gonna make this chart right here. This is our final product. And you'll see that called out over on the right are these filters for ship mode. So if I just deselect standard class, we'll see the numbers change and uh, it updated my chart. And I know this is the, the challenge uh, that I'm gonna make. And to do that, it's better to understand the data. We'll sort of see that we have these different categories here, manufacturing costs, transportation costs, overhead costs, promo costs. Then we're gonna do a total. I'm going to show the profit and total revenue. And that's because in my data, I have three, four columns with costs associated with them. Promo costs, overhead costs, transportation costs, manufacturing costs, exact same as we saw in the chart. So how do we do this? All right, so I've shown you the final product. Let's start from scratch. I'm just going to click on my build it tab here. I'm going to go and really get started with my data source. I'm just going to edit my existing data source here. And again, I've already connected to this data source. It's basically a modified version of the Superstore data source uh, to add a couple columns. This is data I made up myself for it. And then from here, what I want to do is I'm going to use a relational join in Tableau to uh, do a many-to-many -many join. And I'm going to join in a data source that I have here called placeholder CSV. And I actually made this data source. If I just move over here, you will see that it is a single column that counts from zero, or sorry, from one to 20. And that's it. That's all that's in there. And the column is called point. So now if I go back into Tableau, what I'm going to do is create that relationship. I'm going to drag it in. Have that noodle, if that's what you want to call it. And now I have to set my join. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and I'm going to create a relationship calculation. And I'm going to get a prompt. And I'm going to type in one. I just have to make sure the two values are the same between them. So one, and then on the other side of this placeholder.csv, same deal, typing in one. Okay. So now we've created that relationship and uh, you can already see I've been cheating and building out some calculations to go with it. Uh, let's just jump in here and build these. And I'm gonna uh, delete these out so that you can't see them and we'll build them from scratch. Let's see if there's anything else in there. Yeah, let's get rid of color too. So now those are gone. We have to build that chart from scratch. And step one is to build the labels that'll be on the bottom of the waterfall chart. So I'm just going to create a new calculation. I'm going to call it label. And for the sake of this, I'm going to copy and paste it in and then describe what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start with a case statement and I'm going to use that point calculation. That point calculation again was that zero to 20. And you'll notice I then am going to assign each of those first seven values a label. The remaining values, the 13 values, eight through 20, they're not gonna have a value. And I'm going to filter that out later on down the line. But for now, I can just type all those in. You know, I'm just manufacturing cost, transportation, overhead, promo cost. Then I'm gonna have this total cost, show profit and total revenue. I'm gonna hit okay here. Now I'm gonna bring this out of my view onto columns. And what you'll notice right away is they're not in the order that I'm hoping, and I have this null group, so I'm just gonna click on null and exclude it. So again, I just clicked on the value up top and did an exclusion, and now I'm gonna sort these. So label, I'm just gonna click on the drop down. I'm gonna to go to sort, and now I'm going to go and choose a field, and I'm gonna choose that value, that column, again, called point. It counts from one to 20, and I'm gonna choose minimum here, ascending, and now they're all ordered the way that I was hoping. Let's just do um, the entire view here. So now it's taking up the entire view. To build this chart type, I'm going to need two calculations, one for the start of my waterfall uh, using a Gantt chart, and then one to de uh, define my height. 
So I'm going to create a new calculated field here. And I'm going to, again, shortcut a little bit and type in all of my fields. This is where you would do the same thing. And again, I'm going to use point as that field. I'm going to call this field start. You'll notice that when I create my waterfall chart, I'm starting at zero for my first value because I'm going to start at the lowest level. And then on my next level, I'm going to have inserted manufacturing costs. So uh, I'll rise it up. And by the way, these are all negative here because my values for costs are in negative value or negative dollars in, in my data source. So I'm just going to hit OK here, really. Uh, you can also see uh, row five or value five and value seven with zero. That's going to start the value at zero and roll those up. These are going to be totals for me. So we click OK. I'm going to bring start out onto rows so we can start to see this come together. And I want to change this mark type from uh, automatic to Gantt bar. That's going to be a big one here. So now that I have my Gantt bar selected, I can now build the height of those bar charts. And what I'm going to do is call that value. Uh, so I'm going to create another calculated field. This is my third calculated field. Bring this in. I'm going to call this value. And you'll see again, now I'm going to have just a single value where uh, point one is my manufacturing costs, second is transportation, third is overhead, fourth is my promo, fifth is all my costs, sixth is my, my profit, which is just going to be sales minus costs, and then seventh is just going to be my total sales as a, a total value rolling up. So again, I'm going to hit OK here. I'm going to now click and drag value onto size. And we'll now see that we have a Gantt bar chart created. My next step is I actually want to just format this out a little bit. I want to have my lines connect things together here. So I'm just going to double click. This is going to be a nice little trick for you to use in real time. You double click, and I'm just going to do sum start. That's my first start value that I created, plus sum of value. You can just, again, double click on rows, type that right in there. Nothing too wild to do. And once you have that written in, you can hit Enter. And now you're going to see these weird bars. Don't worry. Just click on that marks card. So there's two marks cards, one for each of our values here on rows. And we're going to remove value from size. We're going to change this type from Gantt to line. We're going to change our path now to step. While we're at it, let's just bring the size down a little bit and change our color to something like near black. And once we have that, we'll see these steps. Again, don't worry about anything yet. I'm just going to change the order of these two. We're going to put this value out in front. And now we can create a dual axis with start. So right click dual axis. We have now built ourselves a dual axis chart. We don't need measure names. A Tableau always does this. So I just click on the all marks card and remove measure names straight, straight away from there. Just gets my formatting back. I'm just going to double check and make sure my axis is synchronized. I didn't do it. So make sure you do that while you got a chance. Then I'm not going to need my headers at all showing. So I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to go back to my Gantt chart here and let's add some labels. And our label is just value. So I'm just going to click and drag that value. I held control for myself and just brought it up onto value and I duplicated that. So I have my labels now showing up for each of these. The last little bit um, really, or maybe I'll just hide this by the way, just perfectionist tendencies here, um, is to add some color. and. There's a couple of different ways to do this, and I've sort of ended on this sort of clunkyish way that I do it, but I know it works. So I, just in case things go a little wild, um, it looks like this. And by the way, I'm going to call this color. So I'm going to start on the bottom here and call this out. Is basically I'm going to get the sign of the sum of this value, and if it's a positive value, it's going to return a one. If it's equal to zero, it's going to return a zero. And if it's negative, uh, it's going to return a negative one. And by uh, putting in the string, I'm going to make a string function out of it. 
Uh, so that's really the second part here. So for every bar, it's going to tell me whether it's positive or negative. This top part is just here to tell me, um, am I calculating a total or a subtotal? Meaning, you know, that bars that start at zero that were in columns five or seven or everything else. And if it's in five or seven, I would just assign it a different set of colors altogether. In all of my cases here, I know these are all going to be positive, but I've definitely worked in situations where they're negative. So that's how I sort of build out my color. I know it's a little clunky, but it does the job. I'm going to hit OK on color now, and I can bring color on to color of my Gantt bar chart. From here, I can just edit those colors and do some slight adjustments. So that subtotal, maybe I'll keep it red. And this subtotal uh, for positive values, because it's a one, I'll keep it blue. Again, negative one is red. And then this total, always positive. I'm just going to pick gray. And that is my Gantt bar chart. Now this is, again, multiple dimension bar uh, waterfall chart. No different than any other way. The real magic now left for us is, can we uh, have filters that work? So I'm going to right click on chip mode. Uh, in my data source, and I'm going to show as a filter. When I bring this out of my view, I can then uncheck a value, and you will see, sure enough, once it runs, there it goes, and it should update any second here. There we go. Uh, it updated, and now the values are running all through. Now, if I really wanted to get a little wild, I could add region out on columns here. Maybe I want to make this sort of a trellis chart to go with it. And I could also say add um, a segment here. So I could really build this out to be something much larger. And as you can see, this is an extremely flexible way to add measure, uh, additional dimensions, whether as filters or as columns or rows to really show this type. But, but that's it. That's how we create this chart type this is how we create a waterfall with multiple dimensions and have filters that work. We just create this placeholder data set and it does the trick for us. Uh, anyway, that's the video. Hope you enjoy it and we'll catch you on the next one.